The inflation numbers came out today and there are some big things happening. Inflation is killing everybody. Let's just be straight with it and be honest with each other. Prices of homes are going through the roof. Mortgage payments, the rent payments, the prices of everything is suffocating people. And this report actually gets into a lot of that. And we have to know a little bit about how this is going to play out and how it's going to affect you and me in our near future. All right, let's jump straight into the article today because Statistics Canada came out with their report trying to dictate where we're going to see all of these changes in prices. And so May to May, May 22 to May 23, the numbers just came in at 3.4%. They want to say, what is the biggest number? The number one cost was mortgage interest rates. Well, that's not a real big surprise. It's up 29.9%. That is right, 29.9%. And they said it's going to go as high as 40% and that people have to prepare that these costs are going to be continuing to go up. Now, you know that if you're a landlord or if you have any rental properties whatsoever, if your housing goes up 29%, you know that that 29% has to trickle down to rent, which is only up 5.7%. Here comes the real big difference in that is if those rates got to trickle down, why does it take long? Well, it takes time for people's leases to run out and their leases to come up for renewal and renegotiate prices if you're allowed to in your state or province. So this is why that's very, very sticky when it comes to these prices for rent. But mortgage increases 29%. That is a big hurt on people. Food at restaurants up 6.8%. But listen, mortgage costs is the big one of the day. So the government is really the main driver of high mortgage costs because the rates went higher. Now, what is the biggest main downward contributors? Number one is gasoline. Number three is gasoline. <laughs> They're all gas. Fuel oil and other fuels down 36% and gasoline down 18%. We have to remember a couple things about oil. Oil over the past year, if we take a look, has absolutely went down, down, down. It started off about 13 months ago at 120, and now it's sitting as low as $67. Today, it hit as low as $60. So when we see that gas prices have went 50% lower, you have to ask yourselves, why is gas only down 18% on this clock when it's actually calculating it that it's down half? And this is where a lot of taxes got snuck in. The majority of the reason why our inflation is under control is mainly because of this. And the article goes on to talk about that, that it's the gasoline prices that went down that is causing us to go down. But this is this within Canada's control? If we take a look at the map of Canada, Canada right here, Russia, the very, very dark colors, you can see the dark colors are the ones that are the biggest producers. So Russia, imagine that entire country going offline, not selling their oil anymore. We are now down to United States and Saudi Arabia, the biggest oil producers, because Russia is just going to be hoarding their oil and they're sending whatever extra they have over to China and to India. So it is coming off the global supply. If we look at globally, number one is Russia, number one in the world. And then United States and very closely Saudi Arabia, those two. But when Russia disappears off of the list as completely, there's going to be demand everywhere else. But look at Canada. We're a nothing burger, as Mr. Wonderful says. Nothing burger. Three million. We're squat. So when we want to talk about, well, you guys, inflation is under control and gas prices are coming down. This has nothing to do with Canada. It's purely a coincidence that it's actually helping us out. If we want to look now what's actually happening, because you want to ask why number one is gas down 50%, but they're only saying that it's down 18. Main reason for that is new taxes that are rolling out across Canada in carbon taxes in every different province. It depends where you are. But in general, prices are going to be going up 11 cents to 14% of gasoline just July 1. So in a couple of days, these rates are going to be going up for gas a lot. So as we got used to that high fuel price, we're going to get gaslit a bit here because they're saying, well, gas prices are down 18%, but they should be down a lot more than that. The reason they're not is because they're increasing taxes on oil like crazy. It also interesting for you to follow along with the report. If we take a look at this, 
do you see the main contributors is saying mortgage interest costs is the main contributor. But if we take a look at Canada, Canada is printing money like it's going out of style and it is not stopping at all. So if you print money, you are actually causing a lot of inflation. It's funny though, when we do our inflation reports, nowhere on the list does it even come close to talking about the money supply that is increasing. All right, so let's go through the report a little bit and then let's take a couple notes of what they're saying is the big things that is happening. Number one, the consumer price index rose 3.4% over the year over year in May following a 4.4% in April. So it was a little bit higher than we expected in April, a little bit lower than we expected in May. The slowdown is largely driven by lower year-over-year -year prices of gasoline, 18% that we talked about. You can go look at this report on StatsCan anytime that you would like. The mortgage interest costs up 29.9%, and it's going to be going higher, much higher, as more and more loans are coming up for renewal. Even notes, the largest contributors to month-over-month -month increases were mortgage costs, big, big things. Year over year decline in energy prices by base year effect. This has nothing to do with Canada. It is just a, a war between United States, NATO, Ukraine, Russia, all that stuff. We are not in this. Do you know why oil is going down? Because the economies of the world are slowing down. That is the only reason why oil is going down. So that is why we have to very, very quickly, from a government's perspective, hike taxes, carbon taxes, while we're used to high prices. This is the same game every other government. This isn't against Canada. This is the same in every government. They always do the same thing. Grocery prices, this is where a lot of people are feeling major, major pain right now. Grocery prices are still up 9% year over year crazy that they're not slowing down. If we want to break it down even further, take a look at like olive oils up 20%. And you guys know that Ukraine and so forth, if we take a look at the map over in Ukraine, this is the bread bowl and all of Russia producing all the wheat. Now that they are at war, what is happening? Well, what is happening is that the cost of the bakery goods, all the wheat, number two and number one supplier of wheat products. So bakery products are up 15%, cereal products up 13%. This is a direct correlation with what is happening in the war in Ukraine right now. So this is the punishment that everyone in the world is paying right now. We talked about the mortgage rates being very, very high, and this is going to continue. But the thing that kind of disappoints me is we should be very, very open. This is the same case with Canada, United States, Europe. They'll talk about the main contributors, but they don't talk about why mortgage costs are high, why food prices are high. They don't talk about why those more. It's because interest rates have gone up, number one. Also, the main drivers of inflation is always an everywhere, a monetary phenomenon. That's what we learned from Milton Friedman. Canada money supply is continuing to grow year over year. Where do you see in this line that it's slowing down? Government keeps printing more and more money. Also, how much the government is spending? Let's go back all the way to the 50s. Do we see any drop in here anywhere? Do we see any single drop in the amount of government spending in our country? Zero. Government spending and government money printing is out of control, but no Nowhere on the list for the biggest drivers of inflation do you see this? Nowhere. And so we have to be grown-ups about this and understand that we are sometimes our own worst enemy. Look in the mirror, right? What we expect our governments to give. So if we want to look at Canada, let's not go too off subject, but we just elected a new mayor in one of our largest cities in Canada. And the new mayor is very, very socialist. So a lot more welfare payments, a lot more income homes. But when you do that, you have to increase the taxes on everybody. So the taxes on every single property and every single business have to go way, way up to afford this. So it's always, the government doesn't create money. It just takes money from one group of people and gives it to another. So we have to understand how that works. This isn't Canada. This isn't Toronto. This is every country in the entire world operates like this. So how long is it going to take for you to actually feel, let's look at this word, punishing, this sting, if you will. Please go to Investopedia and look up response lag. And it says, whenever any government increases or cuts the rates, it can take 18 months before there's any evidence of changes. So we're trying to crush inflation right now. That's what we're trying to do. And so they keep talking about the set. 70s inflation. This doesn't matter if you're talking about the United States Fed, doesn't matter. If you're talking about Tiff Macklem in Canada, doesn't matter. They keep referencing this period of the 70s. 
And so this period is not really the period that you should be worried about, even though this is what they want to bring up all the time. Of course, this is our most recent memory of high inflation. We only had low inflation because of globalism, and that's all going away right now. Remember, in the 70s, we had high inflation because the baby boomers that were all born in the 40s all turned 30 at the same time and all had to buy a home at the same time, buy a car at the same time, and have babies at the same time. This is demand-driven inflation, and this is what they're trying to squash right here. But really, the problem that we have is back in the 40s. After the Second World War, we had massive international debts. When we had massive international debts because of the Second World War that we had to fight, they had to print a crap ton of money. And it's that money printing that happened during the 40s that caused that inflation that you can see here that was over 10, 15% every single year. This is what you have to be worried about. This is demand driven. This was debt driven. So if we look at Canada right now, we have insane amounts of money printing that is happening and we have insane amounts of spending that is happening. So this is, if you're going to look anywhere or study any period, I wouldn't necessarily be studying the 70s. I would be studying the 40s. So if we jump back into where we are today, Yes, 29% mortgage costs is the biggest problem that we're having today. Biggest, biggest issue. But here comes another one and a moral hazard that I'd like to propose to you. You tell me that the largest problem is when it comes to inflation and rates, the major problem that everybody is facing. But this is what I wanted to ask you. Just let's say we have high inflation already. Then when they have high inflation, they say, well, and I'm putting this arrow down here, we need to raise the rates up to 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever that is. If they raise the rates up, what did we just learn on that report? Well, when they raise the rates on homes, what happens to your mortgage payments? They go way, way up. And when your mortgage payments go up, all of a sudden, now they say, well, that registers as more inflation. So just try to follow me on the loop. The government raises rates to 5% from zero which causes mortgage rates to go to the moon, which causes inflation, which causes them to build more rates, which causes inflation, which causes more rates. Do you see this like vicious circle doom loop that they're stuck in right now? This is going to continue for a while. And every single time that they bring this up, every single government, it doesn't matter what country, United States, Europe, Japan, it doesn't really matter where this is happening. Every single place is talking about this right now and that these rates have to stay higher for longer. So expect the rates on your mortgages to stay higher for longer. They're not going to go anywhere for a while until something breaks. And when something breaks, then you're going to be able to know for sure what to do. As you guys know, I operate in Toronto. I have a site here, sellhire.ca, where we sell properties in Toronto for more money, less hassle and quicker. So you guys can always go and find me there if you're in Toronto looking to sell your properties. But I'm also an investor and I invest in Canada and the United States for the past 30 years. So I can help you guys on a lot of this stuff along the way. And I'm just doing this to try to give back. Anyway, you guys, I try to give as much value as I can. If you guys are on TikTok or on Instagram, follow me right now. Please go over to my YouTube channel. You can go to Rough Team Realty, where we talk about all things macro, where we want to help you build your businesses and make a lot more money. Also, you know, we have a sister channel. We'll put it down in the description below. Our sister channel is specifically for Toronto properties. I just did a video today about it, about Olivia Chow and all of the changes that are coming for the Toronto market. So you can follow me on both of those channels. I would really, really appreciate it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming by. Please subscribe and follow. If you have any direct questions for me, you can send me a message at contact at Rough Team Realty, contact at Rough Team Realty, or send me a DM and I'll jump in and try and help you out in any way I can. Hope you have a great night. Thank you very much for everything. Please keep on making money. Stay safe out there. Follow the channel, comment if you can. I'd appreciate it. Have a good night.